For the theory that we have in Chapter 7 for our payroll, this problem 7-3, A was assigned, B is extra, it really runs through the various concepts that we have within our payroll. So just taking a look here at this with our problem 7-3B, which is an extra, it is not required, but these numbers should be in your book. Some of the pieces that we have are how do we calculate our regular earnings and our overtime earnings? So uh, that would be one component. Another component is of the earnings that we have, what amount are taxable for Social Security? Another consideration that we have is for this particular state, is there any SUTA or state unemployment tax that is required by the employees? We know that FUTA is paid only by the employer. So that's not a consideration. So let's get it started here with the first piece we're gonna, we will look at is what's the number of hours for each employee. This comes from the time card, which is right here. So for both 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 10 plus 8 gives us 42 hours. Now, of we, as we know, of those 42 hours, 40 are regular pay, so 2 would be overtime pay. So we will go down and we would add each of those for every employee. 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 gives us 40. 8 plus 10 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 gives us Again, that's 42. <clears throat> and in, <clears throat> excuse me, in that we would recognize what portion of that will be at the regular pay rate and what will be at the overtime pay rate. So we would continue on down with those. 44, 41, someplace in here. This one is the 44 because he worked on Saturday. Jilly is at 40. 41 for Karn. 46 for Ober. And 42 for Wong. Which means that, right, many of these employees have overtime. And nobody has a. Uh, shift that's not even at 40 hours. So that's how we come up with the overtime. Now the other piece of this, we've got the hours. Um, here they give us the pay rate. So with that, with our pay rate, we recognize that if we have a regu regular rate of 25. That employee does have overtime, so the overtime is 25 times 1.5. So for these with our overtime rate and our regular rate, I had that information and now I've imported it in here based off of that pay rate that we're given and the overtime rate. Now, I have highlighted here, or grayed out, that for Dor and for Jilly, because those two employees do not have overtime, so we're not going to need that rate. I do want to point out that with an overtime rate, if the employee has a salary, we would want to keep that salary intact for the time period that they're being paid. For example, if we have the salary amount for a weekly employee, that, that salary amount is a weekly amount, we would keep that weekly 
salary amount intact rather than dividing it down into dollars. The only time for a salaried employee we use a rate per hour is for overtime. Of course, we might have to calculate what would that regular rate be so that we can calculate the overtime rate. So with that, now we've got that component. In looking at our exercise here, then we would be ready to fill in the number of hours in this column right here. So we'd have our 42 and our 4, etc. going on down. The beginning cumulative earnings have been given to us and we're just copying and pasting this information that we have, earnings at the end of the previous week. We copy and paste that information into this beginning cumulative earnings column. Because for any employees that are maxed out for either the um, suit tax that has a $7,000 cap, the feud tax, which has a $7,000 cap, or our Social Security we, that has a 106800 cap, we recognize that we need to know how much have they earned so far. So, so far, we've got the number of hours for each employee, and we have the overtime, regular and overtime rate. And from that information alone, we can begin filling in this information here. So our regular would be the regular hours times that regular rate. Keeping in mind, if we had salaried employees, we would need to keep that salary intact. The overtime earnings would be our overtime hours times our overtime rate. So then the total is the regular plus the overtime. So ending cumulative wages then is adding together our beginning cumulative, which is this column here, plus our total for this period, which is this column right here. Then as we look at um, other columns, just trying to work through the worksheet that we have, so up here, we can do the calculations for regular and overtime earnings. And then we can add those two together for the total. And I'm going to put in brackets here. That is total earnings. They don't say it. Another term for that would be our gross pay. So from here, we can take a look for our employees as to what we have for totals. And uh, the next section on our worksheet is what are the taxable earnings for unemployment? Well, the cap for that Unemployment is six, excuse me, seven thousand for federal and for state. So if we look back at these guys right here, this employee right here has um, six thousand seven hundred forty-five. So there, there are just a few earnings left that are taxable for unemployment. So that unemployment earnings. taxable column that we have would be our $7,000 cap minus the earnings at end of previous week. Now, in that answer that we get, if the number is a negative, no earnings are taxable. If that number is positive, we need to compare it, recognizing a, at least a portion will be taxable. So then we will compare the amount 
here, if it's positive, amount from that calculation that still is taxable versus earnings this period. And you'll take the smaller of the two. So let me talk back through this. And I apologize, the handwriting is really sloppy. And it has to do with the way that I'm accessing the, the board that I'm writing on. So let's talk about these unemployment earnings taxable again. We have $7,000 as the cap. So if we take that $7,000 minus this amount that shows in the earnings at end of previous week column, it will tell us if we have taxable earnings or not. If the answer is a negative number, it means that the earnings so far are above that cap, so nothing is taxable. If this number is a positive number, as we would have, for example, with bold, when we take that $7,000 minus the 6745 that we have for cumulative so far, we see that there is an amount that is taxable. And this taxable amount would be $255. So now we're going to compare that with what this employee has earned so far this period. Well, I can tell just by a quick look that it's going to be the amount still taxable is $255. And the amount for this period is $1,000 something or the other, whatever it calculates to. So that tells me that the amount that is taxable for our unemployment would be 255. So I'll carry that down here into my unemployment taxable earnings column. We're not making that calculations yet, but what we have is the amount of earnings so that when we're ready to do that calculation, we already have the earnings that would be applicable. So continuing on, we'll look at what other employees have. Now here with door, 7,000 minus this 136, 240, it's a negative number. So nothing is taxable for Suda. The same with Gale, 7,000 minus the 32, 730 is a negative. So I'm just going to scan down here. The other one for unemployment would be our over and 7,000 minus 67. 9.5 gives us a taxable amount of $205. And so, if we were filling in that unemployment box, we would have 0, 0, 0, all the way down to over. And over down here would be 205 in that box. And of course, well, and say and of course we would get totals but we're not ready for that so just taking a look then at the next piece that we have our social security wages and the amount that's taxable so we'll take a look at those in our next video